Hi, I'm Robert Bible with the Mount Baldy Ski Patrol. And this video is to augment our skills video with some demonstrations that you can do at home to help you understand some of the things that we teach in the OEC class. Tonight we're going to do a video that you can do, you can, you can assemble all the items um, and do it yourself to help you understand how the lungs work and how um, we deal with a penetrating chest wound. So the first thing is you need to assemble some items. First, you need some three liter jars. Okay, so this is six liters total. And as a little refresher, how much blood is in a typical human adult? Go look it up because it relates to this six liters. So we need those. I'll put them over here. You need four, at least four big balloons. Okay. You need a knife. <laughs> Sorry. You need a baggie. You need some tape. And you need a bunch of cups because you're going to have to empty these. So I'll be back after we get these all drank up. It may be a while. Okay, so now I've emptied these out and pulled the labels off and washed them. Um, a high aptitude for drinking soft drinks helps in this demonstration. We need to cut the bottoms off now. I've never done this before, so we'll have to see how it works. But So this is what we want to get, and we want to cut the other one about the same point if we can. The end product here, we have a balloon which simulates the lung, and we put uh, another balloon over the bottom to simulate the diaphragm. This will be one half of the chest cavity. And um, the steps to making this I'll go through. Um, it's a little bit tedious, and I'm sure that somebody can come up with refinements, but you'll notice when I push up on the diaphragm. I'm pushing up. See the air go out of the lungs and this is how the lungs work. So you inhale. If I had enough here, I could actually pull it and see it get bigger, smaller. So if I get bigger here, I pull down on the diaphragm. This diaphragm is a little small so I don't get much and I push up. It exhales. Does it. Okay. So, the steps on this, hopefully you didn't throw out the bottom and cut off because it turns out that it's a necessity. Go ahead and put some holes in it without cutting yourself. It just has to bind. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put that right in here to stiffen the bottom up. And I have some little pieces of duct tape. Hold it in place. Okay. And then I found that if you actually put duct tape all the way around, it gets rid of the sharp edge so that the diaphragm doesn't break when you stretch it over. Now, important step, before you create your lung, you need to pre-stretch it. So blow it all as big as you can. But Robert, haven't you had a collapsed lung and aren't you not supposed to be blowing up balloons? Small details. And then that'll be put into here. Looks like I did this one more than the other one. Simply put in stretched across the top. 
that. Now the top, you have the balloon, I've tied it off, and I'm going to cut the bottom off of the balloon. The reason I realized I didn't have my vest on is because I didn't have to reach into my pocket to get my scissors. And now this next step I'm not going to show because there's a certain amount of verbal techniques involved with it, which should not be on a video, but we need to stretch this over the bottom. So after I get that done, I'll come back and we'll go to the final steps in creating our lung model. Hi. So I'm back again. I've gotten diaphragms over the bottom of both. I have lungs in, in both cavities, and I've taped them together because this is our chest cavity. Now, obvi obviously, in a real chest, the lungs are going to fill the whole area. There isn't um, just air sitting around them. But uh, I haven't figured out how to do that for a demonstration yet. Um, so you can see here. If right now the diaphragm is in its smallest state, so it's contracted, and we have our lungs, what we're calling full, and as we expand the diaphragm, we exhale, and as that contracts, we inhale. And we're changing the volume, the, the lungs are passive, and we're changing the volume of the cavity around the lungs. And this is how we breathe. And you can sit here and do this and get everybody very happy. <laughs> now, what happens when we have a penetrating chest wound? So here's our penetrating chest wound. If I can get it in. Let's see if the resistance of the other... Oh, you can see the lung isn't working very well anymore. It's still trying because it's less resistance there, but it's not working very well. Now, let's take a break, and we'll come back, and I'll show you what we do for a penetrating chest wound. I'm back here, and I'm ready to treat the penetrating chest wound, or the sucking chest wound, as we call it. I've taken a baggie, and uh, since my patient's very small, I've cut off one little piece of it, okay? So what we want to do here is we want to create a one-way valve. So we put on a three-sided approach. So I'm going to put a piece of tape here, put that over the top. I'll try to do this. I want, it to, I want it to lie flat across. It's important that it lies flat across the wound. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing here down the side. And what I'm doing is I'm leaving the side open where liquid will drain out because usually this there is also some blood involved in one of these. And now what I've created is I've created a hopefully a one-way valve. Um, this is not an easy thing to do. And if I've done it right and I've worked the diaphragms, the lungs should now work. And as you see, they do. And the advantage of the one-way valve is any additional leakage will self-compensate for itself. Now, there's an important point about this in that this is an active intervention, which means that you have to continually monitor whether it's working properly or not. So if you see any additional respiratory distress or um, evidence of pressure building up, such, such as a distension in the trachea, you need to immediately go to your occlusive flapping bandage and burp it and make sure that it is working. I can't answer any questions. I hope you have a good time putting this together. We had a great time. Um, you don't really have to drink all the soda. <laughs>